But let's talk to Simon Calder now, travel expert, of course, travel guru, many would say, from The Independent, uh, because it turns out that there's a lot of scams out there. So if you're busy booking a holiday to get away from all the madness, beware. Simon, a very good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Mike. Yes, um, this particular warning comes from Booking.com. Now, you possibly will be aware of this company. I am. It is, it is the biggest and most valuable travel company in the world. It's worth more than £100 billion, pounds, really? which is even more than Gareth Southgate get, yes. gets paid. And uh, the chief technology uh, security officer, somebody called Marnie Wilking, has been telling a a conference in Toronto that actually AI is helping scammers really just try and uh, con people on an industrial scale. They mm. say, as she says, it's gone up uh, anything up to 900 wow. percent. And effectively, these uh, organizations, these villains are setting up all kinds of scams. They're going after property owners to try and get their details. They're then contacting individual um, people who've booked and you know, they're being told typically, oh, why don't you um, send us uh, some money um, not on the booking platform and that way we'll both save and we'll split the difference. Anybody who does that is absolutely guaranteed to be handing over their hard earned cash to a scammer. And uh, she was basically saying you've got to have as an absolute minimum so-called two-factor authorization, which is a bit of a faff. You'll know all about yeah. it. You want to do a certain transaction and it says, all right, Mike, we're going to send you a text. Yes. And you've got a copy and a number and it's, you know, it's all, yeah. But but that is one way of keeping... But at um, the end of the day, as safe. much as it can be a pain, it's not that much of a pain. I mean, you know you'd rather be protected. Because than, than, one of the things that you always worry about, and I, I mean, I, I've worried about this, in, 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 and luckily nothing's ever gone wrong so far, touch wood. But, you know, when you're sending money, say, for even if it's outside of something like Booking.com, you're going through uh, the internet, you find a villa, you send the money to the people. There's always a slight doubt in my mind that when you get there, it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh, sure. Yes. And and that is a, a one of the worst, worst uh, scams. And we'll, we'll probably over the next uh, couple of months see an awful lot of examples of that. And these have actually been going on in a kind of slightly analog way for a good few years. Yes. Um, what happens is that you uh, you set up and I'm not accusing you of anything here, Mike, but Mike Graham's marvellous Mediterranean villas. Um, you get pictures from other people's villas. Yeah. Unbelievably, I'm looking for a place to stay. Um, and you've got better prices, you've got availability. And uh, when I say, oh, Mike, Mike Graham's marvellous Mediterranean villas, this looks terrific. You say, yeah, but I'll give you a 20 percent discount if you pay me now. And here's the account number. Yes. Um, and that unfortunately does lead to a lot of people sending money. Mm -hmm. they, they turn up at the villa to find somebody in it or it was knocked down last week, yes. or some other... Or problem. it was never so, there. And in that case, and I know you're not a financial expert here, but, I mean, in that case, would you get protection from, I mean, I guess, depending on how you paid for it, you might get it through your bank, or, you, you know, if you have been scammed, what can you do? Well, uh, it's, it's a very moot point, and that's because you have willingly engaged in a transaction. The fact that the villa never existed, or it did exist, but it was somebody else's, um, because you have decided I'm going to buy this thing, then there is an element of buyer beware. Yeah. Um, it's not quite the same as those scams where somebody phones you up and says, uh, look, I'm from Santander or um, First Direct or whoever, and you've got to do this. That's a proper scam and your bank will probably hand you the money back. Yeah. But this is you going around looking for a holiday and uh, not finding uh, f finding one which is fraudulent and not making the proper checks. And you've got to do all sorts of things. You've got to talk to a real person. You've got to get a landline. And if that landline is nothing to do with the place you're going mm. to or nothing to do with somewhere in the UK, if it's a UK supposed owner, that should ring alarm bells. You want to have a conversation with the owner and say, oh, where's the nearest restaurant? How's the, right. uh, how goes the phone signal and yes. so on? And you'll soon find out if indeed this is a genuine thing or somebody who is just going to take your money and right. run. Which, where is the nearest merchant where I can obtain large, vast amounts of limoncello? That sort of thing. Um, <laughs> and I was reading a couple of stories actually this morning as well. Apparently, uh, just recently, there's been people scammed uh, over various different booking organisations for, for, you know, accommodation around the Taylor Swift concerts, also accommodation around the Euros. I'm reading a story on, uh, on a website here. A Scotland football fan has told how he and three pals were left fuming during a trip to Euro 24 in Germany after being sent to an abandoned dungeon 
uh, which was apparently full of abandoned hospital beds and items including an axe amongst industrial equipment uh, that could have been used to hurt someone. Um, beds held together with duct tape, cardboard beds. I mean, unbelievable stuff. And apparently well, this wasn't your house, was it? This, this was, was not, no. And, and not one of, my, one of my rentals either. No, this apparently is, um, uh, is something that happened. They got to Germany and the, they couldn't get, for some reason, to the, to the place they booked. So this was an alternative offered to them uh, sort of at the last minute, so middle of the night type job. And they got there and they said it was absolutely horrific. You know, beds were falling apart, mouldy, dusty, dirty. We thought, well, we can't stay here. Um, so, I mean, you've got to be very careful, haven't you? Well, un unfortunately, for events like Euro 2024, for Taylor Swift, etc., there is huge demand and there is uh, that these booking sites do not actually go round and check the state of a place. So if I want to put my dungeon on that website, <laughs> then I can do it. Somebody will book it. Right. And, um, you know, depending on how fussy they are, they will either um, just pay me loads of money and stay in mm. this dungeon or they will um, uh, complain. And these people complain. But there are very, very few controls. If you contrast that with booking a proper package holiday, which, frankly, for the euros is going to cost you a hundred billion pounds but if you can do that then if there's any problem with the accommodation the company that sold you the holiday has to sort it out there and then it is very very unfortunate but you do need to understand that if you're taking a chance going online booking a property that clearly somebody has just thought oh we've got we've got that garage or that um, light industrial factory yes. we can sell that to scotland fans um that uh, unfortunately the uh, booking site is then going to say, actually, if you read the small print, you'll see that the contract is between us, be between you and the owner of the property, yeah. nothing to do with us. And right. if they do give you a little bit of customer service, that's actually going legally beyond what they're mm. applied to do. Yes. So let the buyer beware, as they say. Any big travel yeah. news to tell us about this weekend, Simon? Unfortunately, yes. Um, Air Lingus <laughs> yes. has got an industrial action oh, uh, coming up. Now, this is pilots who are fuming about being refused a 24% pay increase, which right. they say they, they need one to make up for inflation since 2019. They voted 99% in favour of what's called a strict work to rule. Now, in any airline, there's huge amounts of flexibility involving the flight crew because there kind of has to be, you know, you get a weather delay, air traffic control slot hold up or whatever. Um, but the pilots are saying we're only going to do what we're rostered. We're not even going to answer the. Right. My goodness me. And even phone, as you... Go on. Aer Lingus has already. This is the main Irish airline has already said it's going to cancel between one in 10 and one in five of its flights uh, in the first week of the strike, which begins on Wednesday the mm. 26th. And if you've got a booking with them, uh, you can get a full refund. But of course, most people want to get to where they need to be. And crucially, Aer Lingus doesn't seem to be reminding people, so let me do that, that if you're booked, say, from Birmingham to uh, Dublin to Boston, and they cancel the Dublin to Boston bit, then um, uh, they have to find you an alternative way of getting there if any seats are available, which might mean going via Paris or Amsterdam or something. Mm. Crucial also to say that the UK operation on Aer Lingus direct from Manchester to North America isn't affected. Neither is Aer Lingus regional. And that just um, hops people from places like uh, Edinburgh and Newcastle mm. across to Dublin. But if your connecting flight from there is cancelled, then uh, normal European air passenger rights rules um, are apply and you might even get a little bit of cash compensation. Goodness me. Well, it could turn out to be a good weekend after all. Great to talk to you, Simon. Thank you very much indeed. Simon Cool. have a good weekend. Travel expert on those booking.com scams. Be very, very careful uh, if you're booking a summer holiday.